Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Natasha, the unconventional Aussie, and today I want to share with you my journey to Islam. Um, I have a lot of information that I want to put into this video. So what I'm going to do is break this video into two smaller videos, and that way it'll just prevent me from repeating myself and waffling on a little bit, and it'll also be easier for you guys to follow. So with that said, let's get started. I grew up in Sydney, Australia, and I lived there till I was about 23 years of age. And then I moved to the UK where I still live today. I came from a Christian background, a Christian household. Um, my mom actually works for the church um, and also is a volunteer for the church. And my stepdad uh, is a volunteer as well. So they both play quite a crucial role within our local community. And on top of that, I went to a Catholic high school. And um, so in Australia, the grading systems is a little bit different to the UK. So it goes from year seven to year 12. Um, so I studied religion as a part of that, that whole time. And it was kind of when I was at high school that I started questioning my religion and started questioning my faith because I was starting to get more intrigued. I was starting to question things because when you're young and I know when I was young, I just kind of went along with the flow. I did what, you know, my parents said, I did what the minister said, I believed what I was told to believe. And it wasn't obviously until high school that I then started to kind of get a mind for my own and started to question things that I was being told um, because it just wasn't sitting right with me. It wasn't settling with me. So naturally I just was asking questions and I was asking questions both to, my, both to my teachers at school and also to the minister at our church. And the responses I was getting were just never, like never satisfied me. And I always found myself asking 10 more questions about that one question because it just never sat, it never sat right. And I never walked away getting an answer that I was like, oh yeah, that like, that makes sense. It was always like, oh, okay, yeah, like, and again, I was just kind of going on with like with the flow of things. And then I got to like my towards the end of my schooling and I just kind of lost interest in religion. I still believe that there was a God and I still believe that there was one God. But in terms of like me going to church um, every Sunday and also going to, on church to church other days of the week um, and just my general interest in it, I just lost it. Um, and it remained that way up until really recently, if I'm honest. Um, so f from that point, I think we'll fast forward to 2016 when I moved to the UK and I met my now husband, whose name is Osman, and he was a, a non-practicing Muslim. And what I mean by that is he you know, he ate halal meats and he stayed away from the things that he knew he had to steer clear of, but he wasn't praying. Um, he wasn't fasting through Ramadan and he wasn't doing those things that associated him with the Islamic way of life. So I never really concerned myself with the, his religion. I never asked any questions. It was very much an unspoken about topic in our relationship both because I was uncomfortable about it and also because we just never really needed to talk about it. So why would we? And then um, something, something changed. So again, like let's move forward another three years and up until really recently. So it was May, about May this year. And I noticed um, Osman doing little things that he hadn't done before like saying Alhamdulillah after our daughters would sneeze. Um, he would want to say a prayer for them when they were going to bed. And we actually recently had our second daughter in July, Alhamdulillah. And he wanted to say a prayer for her when she was born, which didn't happen with our first daughter. And so little things like that started creeping in. And so I knew something was going on. And so naturally I questioned him about it. And yeah, like he, he just said to me, well, yeah, like I'm, I, I want to start practicing again. Um, you know, I wanted to come to you about it, but I felt really anxious about coming to you. I felt really nervous about coming to you and I didn't know how to approach it with you. And the reason he felt like that was totally legitimate because if I'm being completely honest, um, yeah, I, I didn't like the religion. I didn't like what I knew of it. And 
from what I knew, which was very media driven, obviously we know that's not the truth, but at the time I thought I knew enough to know that I didn't like it. Um, so of course he's going to feel that way about it, about telling me. Um, so anyway, he's told me now that he wants to start practicing again and immediately I felt angry, scared, confused, um, upset, every emotion under the sun I think passed through me. But the biggest one of all was I was so uncomfortable. I couldn't help but question like where does this leave me and where does this leave our two daughters because like I'm not a Muslim, they're not Muslim, so where to from here? And I actually, it's really quite funny looking back on it now, but I actually remember screaming at him saying like, I'm never going to be a Muslim and I'm never going to support you being a Muslim. And it, it is funny to look back at it now because clearly Allah had other plans for me, which I didn't know at the time. Um, but yeah, so I was really, it was a really um, tense and awkward time. And I think it's really important to note in this part that we weren't married at the time. So we only got re married recently um, in October of this year. So really, really recently. Um, so, and I think me not accepting his religion and him always feeling a little bit like, even if he wanted to practice, he felt like he was never probably comfortable to practice because of how I felt. And that was creating this invisible barrier between us that neither of us knew was there until it was gone. And just it, it, like our relationship completely changed. So I'm at the stage where I'm super uncomfortable. I don't know what to do with myself. It was, I think I remained this way for maybe like a week. And then it was like, I woke up one morning and someone had just slapped me in the face and was just like, what are you doing? Why are you letting this, like, why are you letting this affect you so much? What, like, what is wrong with you? How could I be so judgmental of something that I knew nothing about? Like, if I really open-heartedly reflected on my feelings towards Islam, I knew that I didn't really have any factual information. It was all information that I'd gained from the media or also information that I'd gained from other people who had um, a negative attitude towards Islam. So both of those sources were not really reputable and were not really reliable. So I kind of was like, okay, I, I'm going to do my own research and, and I'll go from there. So I secretly started watching videos on YouTube. I started reading a lot. I started like, you know, collecting PDFs and reading those. And slowly but surely, I started to feel less and less um, uncomfortable with it. And I remember the first thing that completely like intrigued me was I was really always uncomfortable when Osman would refer to God as Allah. Like it would just, it, I just felt really awkward with it. And I was just kind of always like, why don't you just call it like God, God? Like that's like, that's, that's how you call God is God. Like I was just, it, I never got it. It never like sat with me. I'd never understood. And the first thing that I learned, so I was watching a three part series um, on YouTube and it's called Understanding Islam. And I will link it for you in this description because if you're someone like me at the very beginning of your journey, or if you're looking into Islam and don't really know a lot about it, then this was a really good starting point because it doesn't really bombard you, but it gives you really good information. Um, just, just to start you off with. So anyway, so I was watching this three part um, series of understanding Islam. And the first thing that the teacher said was what Allah means. And all it is, is the Arabic word for God. And immediately I just had this like epiphany. I was just like, oh, like that's, that, that's it. Like, my goodness. And, and like immediately I just felt so much better about it and so much less uncomfortable. It was just so strange, but it really intrigued me to, to find out, okay, so I've had this really strong emotion towards something so small. So what else am I going to find out that I feel really negatively towards that I shouldn't feel negative towards at all? So I kept watching, I kept reading and then Osman caught me. He caught me watching some videos and again, he was like, whoa, like what's going on what's happening and so I said to him like you know I've been doing some research and obviously he was really happy that I was opening my mind and actually learning about it um and 
you know, I said at that point, I said to him, you know, I feel like I've gotten as much as I can from, you know, where I'm looking and, you know, I need something else. Like, do you think I should read the Quran? Do you think that would be helpful for me? Or do you think it will be a little bit too much too soon? And he was really supportive and he was like, no, absolutely, like, read the Quran. Definitely, like, if you have any questions, like, write them down, bring them to me. If, if he couldn't, so he was saying if I couldn't find the answers, he was going to find them from other people that were reliable and made, make sure that he came back with an answer for me within the next couple of days. And he did every single time, every single question. And I will do a separate video on all of the questions. I have kept them all. All of the questions that I had about the Quran, because I think it's really important that from my perspective of knowing nothing and reading the Quran and having all these questions, like it really brought Islam together for me and really, really helped me. So I will do a separate video on that, inshallah. And anyway, so... I was reading and reading and I just gave birth to our second daughter in July. So I had a lot of time on my hands to read whilst I was breastfeeding. So I was up a lot of the night breastfeeding again. So I was just reading. And then during the day sitting around, I had like a lot of time to read. So that's what I did. And I think it was a couple of weeks and I'd already gotten past halfway and I'd had pages of questions and I was getting really, really into it. And I was getting to the point where I started to believe what I was reading and it was starting to kind of impact how I was feeling. Um, and, you know, I, I spoke to Osman about this and I said, you know, like, this is what I'm reading and, you know, I believe it. And he said, well, that, that's really good. You know, like, that's, that's fantastic. What, like, I, like he, he was just kind of in awe that I had come so far in such a short time. And, from that point, that my continue of reading and learning and my growth towards Islam, my journey started to change. So originally my journey was like I was only doing this so that I could support and understand my partner, who obviously is now my husband, but my partner at the time. And now it was becoming a journey for me of actually Islam is starting to look like it could be a part of my life so where do I go from here and this kind of went on for a few weeks and I was getting more and more and more hooked and then I just kind of I had a bit of a freak out moment I had a bit of a meltdown and Osman asked me to watch a video on YouTube and I was just like no like I'm not interested I, I don't want to watch anything and I don't want to read. I'm not, I'm just going to stop reading. Like, and I remember saying to him, I was just like, can you just stop asking me to watch things? Can you just stop playing things around me? Like, I just, I want to take a step back because I'm feeling really overwhelmed with all of this and reflecting. I was feeling so overwhelmed because it was starting to really like take a hold of my heart and I was getting really scared because what did this mean for me? And what did this mean for now my, my life and how I'm going to live my life? And what changes will I have to make in order to adapt to what Islam expects of me? And so that's a really scary thing. And so, yeah, I just, I just wanted to be left alone. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want it, I didn't want it in my face. I just wanted to be clear of it. And that lasted for maybe like three, four days. And in those three, four days, any time I had to myself, I was like, I just want to read or I just want to watch a video. But I was like, no, no, I don't like, no, take a step back, take a step back because it was just way too much. And I let my thoughts get the better of me. And all, all I could think at the time was things like, you know, I think I should say in this part, definitely one of my biggest tests is how... I worry too much about what people think of me and what people's expectations are of me. And so at this point, all I cared about was like, what will my family think? What will my friends think? Will I have to wear a hijab? Will I have to cover? Um, will, like, will I be able to like, wear my dresses in summer? Will I be able to wear shorts? 
And you need to remember as well, like I'm from Australia, so I'm from a very hot country and culturally, I mean, we wear flip flops, short shorts and tank tops every day in summer. Like that is a normal outfit. So obviously like then things such as like cultural things started going through my head, like, like what about Christmas? What about Easter? Um, you know, all, all of the other things that I live my life by now, I'm going to have to give up. And I was really letting this take over me. I was really, really letting this take over me. And I spoke to a few, a few people about it. And then I started actually talking to my friends about it because I was like, oh, so this is what I've been reading. And I was almost seeking validation from them. Like, okay, if they accept me, like this is good. This is a good starting point. Because again, I, I really care about what people think of me. And so naturally, like this is a big change. I'm going to care what people think. As much as I don't want to, I'm going to. And that's just the truth. So yeah, I started, I started seeking validation and again, this went on for a little while and then I started to just get really frustrated with myself because I was already thinking and acting like I was a Muslim, but I wasn't really, you know, moving forward anywhere because I was just so caught up with the things I would have to give up and the things I would have to change about me. And so, yeah, I was just, I was just stuck at limbo. And like Osman just came up to me one, one of the days and was just like, look, you like, you can't, are you going to be able to just forget about everything you've read? Are you able to just forget everything you've read, forget that you've believed everything you've read and just go on with life as per normal as you would have done? I was like, well, no, like I can't just forget that the things that I've read. Um, and, and that was, it was such a difficult time for me because I was so caught up in what was going on around me that I wasn't letting, I wasn't doing something for me. Yet again, I was doing what I thought other people wanted me to do. And I was doing something and I, or I wasn't in this case, I wasn't doing something for me. I was trying to stick to what everyone else thought that I should be. And, you know, all my life I've been that way. I've been someone that does everything based on what I think people want me to do, if that makes sense. So I, I'm a bit like, I just kind of, you know, blend in with everybody and fit in and do things so that I do fit in. And this was going to be like my only decision that I've ever made that was 100% done for me and only for me. And between the relationship between me and Allah, like that was it. It wasn't for anyone else but me. And I, I was really struggling with it. Um, I knew in my heart what I needed to do and what I wanted to do, but I just was unable to make that decision. So I'm going to leave the video there for now. And what I'm going to talk to you about next is the turning point for me and all of the turning points for me that ultimately led me to taking my Shahada. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support so far. Don't forget to share this video with someone who you think might benefit from it. Feel free to comment or feel free to privately message me any questions you have. And I will see you in my next video.